My journey towards anti-racism is long. It's very long. It's like a, it's a lot of learning. It's a lot of checking myself throughout the process. And it's a lot of, I guess it's a lot of like questioning the things around me and the way that the world works. The journey for me started when I entered community college. I was fresh out of high school, not really knowing a lot about the world around me. Um, I had to take the ethnic studies course that was required for the GEs. And that really changed my life because I took African American studies too. And my professor brought us through history, through the lens of the black community, through the lens of the minorities who help uplift the black community. And I understood then that it's not, there's not one story to the way that racism affects Americans and the way that racism like, affects minorities in America. And learning in that class really started, like kickstarted my journey towards anti-racism. The way my parents explained racism to me as a child was that some people don't like people because of their skin. And I think that that's a good way to explain it to a child, but as you get older, you need to understand that racism is less about differences, it's more about power and the power you place upon differences between you and others to make yourself feel better. And I think understanding that really like, has helped me understand how to break down those walls in myself. My reaction was really the reaction of like despair. Like on top of the pandemic, on top of our president, on top of all this, like three major, major things. And I remember that night, like learning about George Floyd. And that's when I like realized I need to do something. And I realized that this isn't changing. And I think the big thing that happened during the first, the first night was that I felt like rage. Rage and despair. And I think that shaped the way I carried myself through the summer, through the rest of the protests. And the thing about rage for me, it led me to a lot of inaction where I would sit and stew in my rage and I would sit and stew in this inaction. My friend pointed me towards this um, organization for Asian Americans who are interested in uplifting black lives. And it was called Letters for Black Lives. And so I joined their Slack group. And what it was, was we were translating explanations of why this is happening, why black lives matter for into different um, Asian languages. So children, could present them to their parents and their parents could understand. I know that racism benefits me as an Asian American because I am seen as one of the good minorities, right? And that coming to terms with that has helped me like understand that I perpetuate racism, that um, not addressing it perpetuates racism. And so it affects me in a way that I think is unique because I'm almost siding with the oppressor in my inaction. Therefore, it affects me in more of a positive way. And I want to understand, like, I know why, maybe not I want to understand, I know why, but I think that it's important for me to, com to continue to hold myself accountable and to continue to check myself and how I can uplift the black lives around me. I'm not that optimistic that um, within my lifetime, racism will cease to exist because of the way that it benefits so many people. Um, and so I, I think that unfortunately the talk does need to happen until no one benefits. I think a lot of it has to do with the people you surround yourself with and what you're exposed to. 
I also think it has a lot to do with holding your, like, with being able to be honest with yourself. Being able to be honest and say, hey, I am, like, really racist when it comes to looking at people for the first time, when it comes to doing X and Y, and, like, it's, it's like coming to terms with yourself and where you're at, and if you don't come to terms with yourself and take yourself where you're at, or, like, take yourself realistically, there's no way to educate yourself and move forward because you're in constant denial that you're racist. And I think that has a lot to do with people who perpetuate racism don't always know they're doing it because of the, um, because they don't want to call themselves racist because racism to them is hating someone because of their skin. That simplified version of racism that you learn as a kid. And so anything beyond that is obviously not racist. But I think that you need to understand that I am racist, you know? That everyone needs to be anti-racist and not just, oh, I'm not racist. We need to be anti-racist. And I think methods to do that are definitely books. And learning through these texts that are already out there is where we need to start. But that starting point isn't the ending point, because you have to take what, you're, what you know and you have to take it into action. One of my friends that I grew up with, she's also a graphic designer, and she's really turned her, um, her efforts towards education through Instagram. I really, really look up to her. I really admire her. Um, her name's Jocelyn Chung. She's really cool. Um, <laughs> and her actions have really inspired me to, to try and like hold myself accountable, try to be visible about what I'm saying and what I'm doing and starting with me. And I think a lot of anti-racism starts with you. I think questioning things is so important in discovering yourself, the world around you, and bringing yourself to an understanding. Like my biggest moments of life have been when I've been taken a step back and been and questioned what I believe, questioned how I was raised, questioned who I was. And if we don't have these moments where you need to question who you are, what you're doing, why things are the way they are around you, then we will continue onto the path that we're on because it's easy and it's safe. <laughs>